How you doing? This is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. I believe we're live right now. Yes, we are live. Uh, yeah, another week traveling. Uh, I'm out in Breckenridge, Colorado. In this week's video, I want to talk about why is Bitcoin Cash uh, still falling and falling in market cap ranking? It's a big concern, I'm sure, for a lot of investors to see that happening. And yeah, and it's, a, it's worth discussing. So first, I'll briefly say, why am I in Breckenridge? I'm in Breckenridge because I'm actually out here trying to, for business, and a little bit of skiing. <laughs> uh, we're, we're trying to recruit some talent, you know. I own, a, I own a small business, and the way you grow your business really is to get great people and take good care of them and make sure they don't want to leave and do whatever it takes to get them. So if that's flying out to Colorado and, you know, and really making a push, that's what we're gonna do. So, but anyways, back to Bitcoin Cash. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is now somewhere in the low 20th ranking in market cap when in the bear market you know it was like in the top five it was a top five cryptocurrency so this is concerning right i mean and also just in terms of performance it's underperformed a lot of other cryptos and in terms of opportunity cost that's very concerning so you're losing money versus other cryptos if you're in bitcoin cash and underperforming so that, that can be frustrating right and it can make people exit the the asset which I don't think is a wise thing to do. I think you want to look at cryptocurrencies that are undervalued and have opportunity. So I think Bitcoin Cash from here does have a lot more upside. And uh, But I also think it brings up a good point to diversify into other projects, right? Because you don't want to lose an opportunity cost. And you also want to be a, great, a part of a great cryptocurrency like Bitcoin Cash. So I think the number one reason why Bitcoin Cash is falling in market cap is because it is the strongest uh, friction with uh, Bitcoin BTC, which has the largest market cap in the, in the market, right? Like it is of high interest for people into Bitcoin Core BTC to see Bitcoin Cash fail because it means that they were right and uh, Bitcoin Cash, the big blockers, were wrong. So this narrative is very important to, the, to their mission. And I think the big block merit is important not in that sense. We don't necessarily want to destroy Bitcoin BTC. We just want to create a system of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash for the world that can't be censored and uh, and is cheap for everyone to use on chain. So, I think the missions both are you know deserve to go on their routes, and I think Bitcoin Cash has a better chance of being around in the next 10 to 20 years because it's just focused on on that mission. Uh, Bitcoin BTC looks like it's going to be favored by the people that already run the world, right? It's not revolutionary. So I think what we're facing is, you know, short pressure from people that don't want to have um, have the world be unbanked, if you, if you will. Like Bitcoin BTC has partnerships with all the major players and uh, through Blockstream that are funded by you know, huge players throughout the banking industry, Visa, MasterCard. So they don't want to... They don't want to see the old, old world leave, you know, and it's very hard to profit from a system like Bitcoin Cash by the by people that, you know, rule the world or, you know, have power over resources. So I think that's something very important to note here that we are we are trying to be destroyed by the most powerful player in the game. So also, I think Bitcoin Cash has had wounds from their forks. Uh, obviously, the first fork with Bitcoin Cash was with uh, Bitcoin BTC, and then uh, and we had the BSV split, and then we had the eCash split, which is uh, we, we've lost a lot of market cap. Like those market caps of those currencies should still be in Bitcoin Cash, or I shouldn't say should, they would have been if those people didn't leave. But um, they're just trying different philosophies on you know what the mission of Bitcoin is. So for example, like eCash, which was the latest split from Bitcoin Cash, they wanted to have more development within the uh, more development kind of coerced in the system, right? They wanted to, in a sense, tax every new currency into a developer fund. It is very important to have investments within a cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin Cash needs to have investors and people that believe in the project to help the project grow. And they do. They use a voluntary system to like flipstarter.cash. They have um, entrepreneurs that want to integrate it into their system like Kim.com. Uh, they have uh, businesses like CoinFlex, which uses it to aggregate yield. They have uh, businesses like Bitcoin.com that, you know, is really into the mission of, you know, has great wallets 
and uh, noise.cash and YouTube channels out there, the Bitcoin Cash podcast and you know people that want to televise the revolution. So we, uh, sorry, I see a little comment there. So these are all very important things um, that Bitcoin Cash is doing to develop without coercion. And I do think that is, I think there's something that will never leave Bitcoin Cash. It's, it represents like the libertarian philosophy of what money is and should be and what will be proven to be you know superior throughout the uh through, throughout this whole crypto experiment this is bitcoin cash is the reason i got into bitcoin because i wanted a system <laughs> like this and uh the the people that really have a passion towards it are not going to leave and it'll always be a part of the portfolio and it will always be a very easy currency to use which will lead it to grow back in market cap keep in mind there are currencies that fluctuate and perform better at different times i can't tell you how many times i've seen like stellar lumens jump into the top 10 only to fall back out so while bitcoin cash can be at a favor today that's not to say it'll be at a favor tomorrow right and uh during these market runs you have market makers that just come in you know throw a lot of capital on a coin make it run then it, then it'll dump look at this uh Look at this um, pump in the meme coins, right? These meme coins are getting over $30 billion market caps for memes, <laughs> right? They were, you had Doge and Shiba both in the top 10 market cap. Now they're both gone, right? Because the market eventually, you know, sends out the waste, right? And eventually the cream rises to the top. I saw a comment here, I did want to mention this video too about getting your Bitcoin cash off exchanges because your capital on the exchange is actually used as leverage to short your Bitcoin cash. So if you hold it in a private non-custodial wallet, like uh, your Bitcoin.com wallet or something like that, you are giving the, uh, the people that are against us, that Bitcoin BTC crowd I was talking about, um, less of an opportunity to short. And, you know, and when your currency is going down, you know, there's less people that get excited about it. Like so many people in retail have bought in Doge and Shiba because just because the price was going up, not off any philosophical merit, not because they like the utility of it. You know, I posted, I'm here in Bitcoin in uh, Breckenridge looking for places to spend my Bitcoin cash. And people were telling me how, oh, you should look into using HBAR, Cardano, XRP. And I said, yeah, those projects can be great, but show me a cryptocurrency that's easier to use than Bitcoin cash. Uh, I think once you use Bitcoin cash, you understand its true value. A lot of these coins that people are investing in, they've never used it. They are speculating on other people's speculation. So, um, yeah, I, I think these are all very important things to talk about um, as we have fallen out of the top 20 in market cap ranking. I think if you don't count the stable coins, we're, we're inside the top 20, but if you do count the, the top 20s, there we go. Mark, what's going on, brother? doing some skiing out in Breckenridge and doing some work <laughs> yeah KST Lanet says top 24 yeah we are 24 but but you shouldn't really count I think stable coins as uh, or at least I'm not right like I, I don't consider stable coins to be you know within the rankings because uh, there's just no way to really make more money off a of stable coin so yeah um, well it looks like we have a few in the chat here 11 in the chat Guys, give me some feedback since we got people here. Uh, why do you think Bitcoin Cash is falling in market cap? I, I see a lot of people that uh, have said we need a roadmap in Bitcoin Cash. I, I kind of, <laughs> I didn't want to say, I, I, kind of, I kind of thought the white paper was the, the roadmap, right? Like this is the system. And we don't need like one person to say, this is what Bitcoin Cash needs to do. We need a lot of people that want to build things on top of it. So. Uh, yeah, I think today Bitcoin Cash is right around $450. Uh, have I accumulated more Bitcoin Cash? Yeah, I, I, I buy Bitcoin Cash every week, you know, and, and I spend it and I replace it. I spend and replace. Uh, we need Roger Vera back. Yeah, um, not having Roger is, uh, I mean, Roger <laughs> did so much to grow Bitcoin BTC. You obviously see how, you know, great of an entrepreneur he is and, you know, what he can do. But also, I, I think uh, I think the project was getting too much, uh, in my opinion, too centralized around that. Like this was Roger Ver's project, and I think his time away is proving that you know, there's people that really actually, you know, 
you know, have core values like, like Roger that, um, that believe in it. So I think his absence right now, or I shouldn't say absence, he volunteered to speak at my event. And, um, but you know, the guy poured 10 years into every day to build cryptocurrency and did quite a lot. I mean, if he wants to take some time off, you know, how, how can you begrudge a guy for that? Right. So yeah, I think he will be back. I know he's still investing in companies that are building on Bitcoin cash. I know he's a big investor in a coin flex, which is now partnered with Bitcoin.com and their wallets. And I, and I heard I'm in the United States, we cannot use CoinFlex. So, uh, which is, which is unfortunate because you can get like 17% on your, uh, on your crypto, which is pretty amazing. So, uh, unfortunately in the United States, it's not a thing. I tweeted at Mark Lamb and Mark Lamb said CoinFlex is coming to the United States sooner than we think, which is kind of a vague answer, but, uh, hopefully that is sooner, uh, than later because I'd like to support it and I'd like to get that kind of yield inside my Bitcoin.com wallet, which I use. So let me pull up some more comments here. Let me see. Where the fuck are you talking about? Where the, where the F is Mark Lamb talking about BCH? Uh, he talks about it quite a bit. Look up Mark Lamb Bitcoin Cash on, um, on YouTube. I think he's been on Satoshi's Angels uh, interviews and he's a, a big proponent of uh, Bitcoin Cash, or at least his exchange is really centered around it. It has lots of... Uh, exchanges into other currencies it, it's a very easy crypto to use on the platform not looking for until next year bch not looking for until next year you know it's it's hard to say like if we get a killer app that builds on top of bitcoin cash like every like i'm really excited to see what k.im is kim.com's platform that uh if that is a killer app that millions of people start using and they start using um they start using it every day, that would be huge. I mean, Kim.com built a, a large billion dollar company on the internet before, so maybe he does it again. And then also something I, I haven't done a whole lot into, but there seems to be a lot of positive developments is into Smart BCH, which I think a lot of applications can use um, in terms of the DeFi networks. So pretty cool stuff, uh, and which I think makes it more dynamic. Like it makes it cheaper to use than Ethereum and it makes it uh, finite like Bitcoin, and it's like a, the best combination of both, right? Smart BCH, or it makes Bitcoin Cash a great combination of both in general. Yeah, I'm in OG, I'm in Breckenridge right now. I'm going into Denver today to uh, try to recruit some more people to work for my company, or I'm actually thinking while I'm out here, maybe opening a, uh, uh, a branch out here in Colorado. I mean, I absolutely love this. I mean, to escape in the mountains for a couple days is a uh, pretty cool. And if I have a little branch here, maybe I come quarterly, but I like to do something more in crypto. Um, I actually am planning to visit speaking of Roger Vera. I want to visit, visit St. Kitts. As many of you know, I have a goal to expatriate one day. And I just recently saw an interview Roger Vera did of, uh, in St. Kitts about why people should consider it. And uh, I think I'll make a trip over there maybe early in the summer before it gets too hot. So I think I get some more comments here. Top chats. How can we earn BCH? There's a lot of ways to earn BCH. You can uh, use noise.cash is probably the easiest. I remember back in May, everybody was sure BCH would touch 4K. Uh, I don't think it's out of the question still. <laughs> this is crypto, right? What other thing? Is Roger even still in BCH? Did he disappear? Uh, Roger is still in BCH from what I can see. And Bitcoin.com is still very much in favor of Bitcoin Cash, it seems. And I think this CoinFlex uh, partnership is a huge uh, representation that uh, Roger's probably still very involved in Bitcoin.com, which some people were talking about. Maybe he's not. Uh, but I, why else would they? Uh, I don't know. The current CEO seems to be pretty bo uh, pro Bitcoin Cash which is a good thing. So, uh, any other questions, guys? We're on here for about almost 15 minutes. I gotta get back in the car here in the next five minutes to get over to Colorado. Next week, I'm gonna be back home and I'll shoot like an actual video where I'll edit it and uh, and uh, get back in a deep, deep research. You know, ever since I went through uh, a bunch of passings, uh, people close to me, I just like needed to go. Like I booked three different flights and it'll be good to and it's, it's been awesome it's, it traveling is something that's good for the soul you know getting your body out of the same element and feeling different energy in different parts of the, the world we live on a pretty cool rock you know might as well go check it out while we're here so 
Um, but guys, thank you so much for hopping on with me here. Um, these are reasons I think Bitcoin Cash is falling in market cap. But I don't think this is a, I think, I, I think the idea of what Bitcoin should be is not over. Here's Mark. Me and Mark actually had a good conversation about this over lunch before top chat. So Mark says, where are only coins with fundamental or utility to live out? Sorry, it's live chat. I think what BCH needs is a multi-year bear market that kills off all the meme coins and a fundamental projects. Uh, yeah. And um, we will get that multi-year bear market. The question is, are we in the bear market now, right? A lot of people, if the price doesn't go up every darn week, people think we're in a bear market. We have been in a bear market. We have been in a bear market forever. So I think that is uh, Bitcoin. That's common specifically to Bitcoin Cash because uh, it, it, it is not over its 2017 high. BCH will out bear, uh, will bear out the storm. Yeah, there's too many people that fundamentally believe in a pure peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So I think it's pretty inevitable. Uh, people aren't gonna leave this project and uh, we just need more entrepreneurs and investors and people that believe in the mission to work on it. And I do think this is a project or that's like a mountain that people are willing to die on, you know? I'm still waiting. Sorry, I'm reading all of this. Bitcoin Cash needs to hit 35K by next May. I don't know if that's probable. Uh, I'm still waiting to buy more. It'll sell all metals for BCH when sales good enough. Um, yeah, I did. I actually, I sold all my metals during uh, during the height of the pandemic when I think silver went to like 30 bucks an ounce and I went into crypto, it, it was a good trade to do. Um, I'm just not, I'm, right now I'm not really bullish on metals at all and, and nothing to do with um, my belief in, in their, their historical significance and their, the way they hedge against inflation. I just think if you look at, uh, if you look at precious metals, they go through these 20 year bear cycles and they get amazing 10-year runs. So where gold popped in 2011, hit $2,000 an ounce, it's been relatively in a bear market. I think gold's still under $2,000 today, and I think it's gonna continue for the next 10 years. I think it'll get worse. But if you just briefly, I'll give you a brief history lesson. Like gold um, uh, was uh, in 1970s, it went on a bull run. Um, after the dollar was dealing from gold and then it went to a bear market for 20 years. It had a 10 year bull market, 20 year bear market. Then we had a 10 year bull market, probably. All right guys, I just got a call. I need to get in the car. We're going to Denver. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and I'll be back next week for a regular video. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.